Tonight, a big break in a cold case dating back decades. The Troop County Sheriff's Office revealing today a missing Auburn University student's car was found this week, 45 years after he disappeared while driving back to school. Investigators are now hoping the items they just discovered inside his car will help them figure out what happened to Kyle Klingscales. Brittany Kleinpeter joining us live right now on the set with more on this story. So many questions here, Brittany. It's such an interesting story, really, and I talked to several people who knew and grew up with Kyle, and they just tell me that the LaGrange community has really never forgotten about this case. For 45 years, we have searched for Kyle and his car. A cold case that went decades without any answers may be closer to the truth after a shocking discovery Tuesday. Yesterday, the Chambers County Sheriff's Office called our office and asked if we were looking for a Ford Pinto white in color. They gave us a tag number. We ran the tag number, compared it to our case file to determine it was indeed Kyle Klinkscale's car. Officials say someone spotted a Ford Pinto peeking out of a creek in Cusita, Alabama Tuesday morning and called 911. They confirmed through the tag and VIN it's Kyle's car and found his wallet and ID inside, along with what appears to be several human bones that were caked in mud. The Auburn College student was last seen on January 27th of 1976 at a club in LaGrange where he bartended. They say he left the bar that night to head back to Auburn but was never seen again. The sheriff's office says the car was found about three miles away from what was likely Kyle's usual route home. We spoke to his parents back in 1996, 20 years after he first went missing. Then you got something tangible to say, this is it. Then you don't ever give up hope. Friends of Kyle say his disappearance has engulfed the LaGrange community. It never ended. Everybody was always wondering if he was going to show up somewhere. Lauren Griffin dated Kyle back in 1975 and says everyone knew him in a town of only a couple thousand at the time. You know, sweet guy. Most of the time he was very quiet, um, but he was very kind to everyone. Kyle's mother passed away this past year and his father died in 2007. The sheriff regretful this break didn't come sooner. And the GBI's, GBI is now helping the sheriff's office determine if the bones are in fact Kyle's remains and if so, how he may have died. At this point, they haven't ruled out foul play, but they're also looking into the possibility of a person in the car may have simply driven off the road and crashed into the creek. Originally, the sheriff was investigating this case as a homicide, but no one was ever convicted of actually killing him or taking a closer look at that coming up tonight. 11. And I would think that the GBI is going to take maybe weeks or months to go through all that evidence once again in that vehicle to find out what really happened. Yeah, I think we're definitely in for a long journey ahead with yeah. this one. And, and nothing from investigators yet as to whether they believe the car had been there all these years, 40 something years, or whether it had been dumped just recently. No, but with them finding the ID still intact, it does bring up a lot of those questions for sure.